Hello and welcome back to my channel. I have a cute card today using Stamping Bella Curvy Girl collection and this one is Curvy Girl Baker EB856. It's a really nice big substantial stamp and it comes with a sentiment as well. The secret ingredient is always love which I like very much. So we've got some um, alcohol um, colouring going on in there, alcohol markers. I've got a little bit of Wink of Stella to add some sparkle, some non-shed glitter there, um, some um, glossy accents, all sorts of lovely little elements to just lift the card. And you can see your card layers there and the card base 7x7. Seven seven. So I'm using a uh, Wow um, Super Smooth White card and then that is a Stamping Up colour lovely lipstick. And I've gone ahead and heat embossed the sentiment already. And there's also a little strip there of non-shed glitter. It just adds another little um, nice dimension to the card. And I'm using Oleap markers. Set those aside for now and get the stamped image done. So I'm using Memento because that is compatible with alcohol um, ink markers. You just need to check that your ink pad is. This is dye based that so it works well. It is designed to do that. And it's a large stamp and I'm taking it, taking the ink to the stamp, which is the best way with a large stamp. Just tap, tap, tap. You don't need to squish, you just need to tap, tap, tap when it comes to adding your ink to your stamps. And I'm just putting it sideways, which is more comfortable for me to hold. And because you already have your, we will have your card base, um, cut to the right size that means your lining up is going to be much easier obviously you can use a stamping platform for this which will help as well size wise and that's the stamped image it does come out really nicely so it is time to do some coloring so i have um speeded this up a little bit but all of the marker colours that I'm using uh, are listed on the blog. And then if you follow the basic principle of just laying down the lightest colour first, and, and uh, they will all be in order on the blog as to what's skin, what's the dress, what's the apron, etc. Um, we follow the principle of lightest colour first, getting deeper, adding... adding um, shading with a slightly darker colour and you can remove colour or blend with the lightest you can go back with the lightest colour and go back over and that will just smooth any lines so I'm just adding some shading it's not huge areas to colour so it will come together pretty quickly for you so I'm just doing her hat and I'm going around with just the light grey first. I don't actually want to colour in the whole hat. And then the darker grey around the um, outside. And the artist will always have drawn lines which guide you to where the shading shall, should be. And uh, you've got the nice picture as well in front of the, uh, on the stamp set itself, which you can refer to for shading and for colour inspiration. So the apron is going to be grey all over. And then we're going back in with the darker grey. Now that beautiful colour dress. And 
I think she has amazing legs. If my legs look like that, I may well wear a dress that's short. <laughs> but because I like the cakes that she's made, my legs won't be like that. She has killer heels on too. So they've got the same colour as the edge of the apron. The cake I'm going in with, um, the frosting is going to be light. A little bit of definition with the darker. And I'm going in with the colour lifter just to take that off a little bit. Now the same colour as I used on the frosting is the sponge but because it's the cake and I want some definition between the two, the frosting and the sponge, I'm going in with the darker colour now. And the cherry on top. The flower is a lighter pink and then the same red as the cherry for the definition. And then we've got the two greens for the leaves and the little leaf on the cherry. And then we've got two shades of brown for the rolling pin. Light first, dark second. And her hair is the same two shades. So if you have a limited supply of marker pens, I've tried to not use, well, there are quite a few colours used, but, you know, I've used the same for the rolling pin and, the hair, that kind of thing. Just forgot my utensils there. Just adding some grey. Darker for definition. You're going to get the hang of this. So the next thing I'm adding is some Wink of Stella, which if you haven't used it before, is just basically glitter in a brush. You just paint it on and it gives a bit of glitter. I've got a feeling I might need a new one. I was having to hold it to the camera to see if it's coming out, but it is. I do need to replace it, but it is still coming out shimmery. Sometimes when you feel like your card needs something, but you're not quite sure what. The Wink of Stella is great because it just adds a tiny bit of bling there. Okay, that is her all coloured in. Isn't she pretty? Time to add them to your layers. And that piece of glitter, so it's just, I mean, I'm, I haven't even given the measure, measurement for this, but I've cut it slightly thicker because we're going to add it onto this pink layer first. The actual amount that's showing is less than I've cut it by. Watch for the fun part where I realise I haven't actually used my tape runner to the edge of the card, hence it's not sticking. <laughs> and my top tip, which I wasn't following myself. 
Actually, just turn it over and you'll be able to see it better. I've shown you two things, what not to do and how to actually do it. So I've cut it thicker so that you've had that sort of, um, you've got handles basically to, to hold it and to just square it up. Keep it longer and keep it um, wider than you need. And then we can just go ahead and trim off those edges. And then the rest of it builds really nicely, nice and quickly. Just going to use some foam pads. And it's going to seem like I'm using loads, but I always use a lot of foam pads. Um, if you, if you imagine you know you're only going to use one in the corner each corner then that that is going to dip it's going to your recipient won't have a nice sturdy card especially if it's got to get through the mail first and um it just isn't supported if you just if you um view them as support and if you've only got support in those those four corners you've been frugal with it then really you know you've, you've spent all that time on a card and, and it's, it isn't going to look its best so it may seem a little bit over the top, but actually it isn't. Use those foam pads. You can get bigger ones too, so if you cut down on the time it takes you to put them all on. I'm just checking that I've taken all the backings off. And that will line up nicely with your piece you've already cut. That's that together. Start putting it onto the card front. I would probably use a wet glue here. I'm just using a tape runner just for the for speed and for the video. But it's, you know, it's quite thick now that you've got those layers on there. Just keep an eye on making it straight. And then there's the embossed, Sampton embossed. Um, image so I've used wow embossing glitter in calypso and it's got the beautiful glitter in there so for that you are going to need your um, embossing ink pad versamark ink pad or wow do uh, an embossing ink pad again same principle with those foam pads don't skimp on them If you haven't done any heat embossing before, I have got videos um, I've made with that technique. You basically need that ink pad that I mentioned and uh, a heat tool, an anti-static pillow which will take off all the little marks, um, invisible fingerprints and what have you on your card first. It's a really fun thing to do. We're just adding our little elements one at a time. So now I've got Nouveau Drops in Caribbean Ocean. They create like little um, enamel dots. So 
it's self-leveling but if it's um, a bit cold it might not self-level so just make sure it's nice and warm and just add a little dot on a scrap piece of card so that you know it's flowing nicely and I'm just going to add a few now my advice to you is to not do it in this order obviously I'm having to do it in this order because I'm making a video so when I made my um, my sample I hadn't yet glued down the stamped parts but I did lay them so that I could see where I wanted the extra elements I did lay them down without gluing them and then I could just leave that to dry completely now I've got a little bit of um, coordinating ribbon this, that is stamping up lovely lipstick as well which I think is retired but it's just a very fine grow grain ribbon and I've, I've made it into a little bow ahead of time and just adding a glue dot to the back of it so that you can have mess free um, adhesion there so just literally take your bow to the dot and stick it on So the next thing I have, I cut these little hearts um, out on my Cricut and I added glossy accents to the top um, and that makes them look like little enamel shapes. Um, I left those to dry overnight and I've put them on the, um, the sticky dots again and then you've got a ready made, ready to peel off embellishment. Now you could just use a punch for this or a die if you have a heart um, die. It's quite small and I was quite, I didn't want it to overwhelm the card, but I thought it suited the sentiment. So the next thing I'm going to do is add glossy accents. Again, like those Nouveau drops, I would have done this, um, or I would do this before you stick it down and leave it to dry I'm just adding it to the cherry and to her shoes she's got nice shiny shoes came out a bit fast a little bit of a rescue operation there And that is it. Hope you enjoyed this fun tutorial and that you're going to give that colouring a go. It comes together pretty quickly as you could see. But there's lots of uh, Stampin' Bella um, Bellas to choose from so go ahead and check those out. Uh, hit the uh, like and subscribe button if you liked this video. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, all of the instructions, as I've said, are on the blog, all those um, measurements, the um, pens listed in order of um, the ones of how, how I use them. So until next time, take care. Bye bye.